Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus today. Thank God for another opportunity, praise God, to come and share with you the precious words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm honored to have this opportunity once again. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. Just declaring once again that Jesus Christ is the answer. Praise God. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the answer to all our problems. Cast all your cares upon me, Christ says. I care for you. Praise God. And that's the word of God for you today on this New Year's Day. Praise God. This Friday, January the 1st. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. And I have a word. I do have a word from the Lord just for you today. Praise God. If you are here attending and listening at this broadcast today, it's because I believe the Holy Spirit has drawn you. That is my prayer. My prayer has always been, Lord, will you, you draw to this broadcast those whom you would like to hear your word. But now we're looking at Isaiah 22 again. Get your Bibles out. Look with me now. Don't take my word or anybody's word for anything concerning the word of God. Look for yourself. Isaiah 22, uh, that's where we uh, was yesterday, and we are here again today. Praise God. Keep in mind that these this, these writings were uh, written some maybe six or seven hundred years before Christ was even born of a virgin. Remember that now. But remember also Christ says that all the word, all the words in the Old Testament and the New Testament all the Bible is all about him. So this is what you, this is the key to understanding God's word. It's all about Christ. Just remember that. Look for him and you'll see him as you study and as you read the word of God. Isaiah 22, verse 20, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe. And strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And he says in that verse 22 there, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house, and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring, the issues, all the vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cup, even to the vessels of flagon. In that day said the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in a sure place be removed, and be cut down, and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord has spoken it. Praise God. And again, we're speaking from these words that we find here in this uh, 23rd verse of this 22nd chapter. Uh, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. Christ is our nail in a sure place. He's the only sure thing that we can hang our hopes and our, praise God, aspirations and uh, our uh, endeavors, whatever it is that we would like to have in this life accomplished, uh, you got to hang that on Christ. He is that nail that God has hung and, and, and God has established for this very purpose. Now, uh, you know, uh, Luke 12, 48 says, to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is required. And to America, you know, God has been great good to this country here. God's grace has been poured out on the, I uh, listened at, uh, on New Year's, on New Year's uh, Eve there. I think it was Ray Charles that sings that song, America, America. Uh, God has uh, shed his grace upon you. And it's true, God has been good to America. Praise God, no other people, no other nation, except for maybe Israel, have experienced this outpouring of God's grace and God's love. No other. Praise God. And, and uh, even Israel, we, find, we know if we are serious students of the word of God, they pay dearly for their disobedience uh, 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 to the Lord after he had been so gracious and so good and had delivered them and, and, and provided for them. Praise God, they paid a price for their disobedience. And again, America, you will pay the price. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. Praise God. But now, in our last session here, we, we saw um, how God removed all of Israel's uh, false sense of security. And I know 
that, uh, like I say, we, we made many res resolutions here probably. We want things to improve uh, in this new year. Well, you need to start out right. All your false sense of security, all your things that you are trusting and leaning upon, praise God, if it's not Christ, you just need to... You need to junk it. You need to just get rid of it. Amen? Praise God. But Israel's uh, uh, their main uh, uh, stay, the things that they, praise God, depended upon all, more than anything else was uh, this man called Shepna. Shepna. Praise God. The Bible said he was a treasurer. He was a treasurer. He held the, the bag and he controlled the, the flow of the finances for Israel appointed by God. He was. Praise God. You know, the Bible said the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, contrary to what many have said, Tom, many have said the lack of money, but it's not the lack of money. It, that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. Praise God. And I'm sure that uh, this is the area where God will bring judgment upon America. He's going to hit us in the pocketbook where it hurt the most. They're going to bring America to his knees because America has turned against God. That once great nation. Praise God. Yeah, we were great when we held uh, morality to be uh, a very high, you know, on the scale of, uh, of being blessing. But now we don't care about morality anymore. Praise God. We have completely kicked God to the curb when it comes to moral issues. And anything goes now in America. But we will pay the cost. And those of you, especially in the church, that are standing firm uh, with those who uh, uphold immorality, you will pay dearly. And, and that's God's word. Yes, yes, you're going to pay. But Shebna, now, he was the uh, the banker, and God replaced him. God replaced him. We saw yeah, he booted him out. Praise God. He booted him out and replaced him with a man named Eliakim. Eliakim. And we see that in verse 20 and 21. Praise God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe. It ain't his robe. He's just a temporary uh, 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 nail in a shoe place. But he going to put on him somebody else's uh, robe, somebody else's authority here, somebody else's government government going to be committed to his hand, according to that verse 21. And that's none other than Jesus Christ. See, it's just a matter of the fullness of time. When the fullness of time came, praise God, all the Lord Jesus Christ, he took his rightful place as that nail in a sure place. But Eliakim is the one here doing this Old Testament that the Lord has raised up uh, to be that temporary nail in a sure place here. And uh, uh, he is undoubtedly, uh, without a shadow of doubt, he's a, he's a picture of Christ. He's a type of Christ. There's no doubt about that. And the very name tells us that uh, there's a connection between him and Christ. His name means my God will raise up. My God will raise up. Up. That's what it like. Him. That's what that name means. And praise God, he was raised up to be a ruler over God's house, just as Christ was raised up to be the head over his church. Praise God. Christ is the head. Ephesians 120. If you look there quickly, Ephesians 120, it says, uh, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, from the dead, and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come, and has put all things under his feet, it's under Christ's feet, gave him to be head over all things pertaining to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So Christ has been made the head. Praise God. He has been made the head over the church. And as a matter of fact, over everything, nothing moves except by the power of a God. Amen. In that Philippians 2, if you look there, Philippians 2. Praise God. Look at Philippians 2. Flip over over there and turn to that 8 verse there. It says, in Christ being found in fashion as a man, humble himself. 2 8 now, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, hallelujah, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, things under the earth. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. You're going to bow day. Every one of us going to bow one day. Every knee going to bow. I'm talking about the riches. I'm talking about these multi millionaires. Oh, they standing 
sitting tall right now with their great pride. But one day, every knee is going to bow before Jesus Christ and going to call him Lord. Praise God. But now in that verse 22, if you look back at that verse 22 there, praise God, that verse 22 there, it says in the key of the house of David. He's going to lay upon him the key of the house of David. Praise God. Lay it on his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. Praise God. It's clear right here. We know this is Christ. You would have heard that scripture before. We read it over and over again. Look at Revelation in 3 then. Praise God. You've heard that before. Praise God. Revelation 3. Look at 7 there. And the Lord says, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, these things said he that is holy. He that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that opened it and no man shut it, he that shut it and no man can open. So it's clear that Christ is here. Praise God. You know, and like I said yesterday, if you got a good, decent Bible, all oh, that's going to be in red. That let you know this is Christ. Praise God. Forecast it. Prophesy that he's going to come and praise God. All the, the government, the house of David. He's talking about the house of David here. And we know the house of David. Praise God. In this here, uh, 22nd verse of this 22nd chapter, we, you know, the house of David uh, is, is today, in, in reality, today is the church himself. Christ is the rule of the church. He's king of king. He's Lord of Lord. Christ is the only way. He's the only door into the church. Praise God. When he opens that door, praise God, can't nobody shut it. And when he shut that door, can't nobody, can't nobody open that door. Praise God. God has committed unto Christ the governments of this world. Praise God. He's sovereign over this world. This world just don't want to admit it, though. You want to do your own thing, but let, uh, the judgment is going to come. Judgment is already here. Praise God. A lot of them don't realize judgment is already here. That's a form of insanity already in this world. Praise God. Used to be a time when we could talk about issues. Used to be a time that we could disagree. Praise God. And still love each other and still respect each other. But now when people disagree with me, praise God, look like a mad dog come out of them or something. They get to gritting their teeth and, and their eyes begin to turn blood red like they want to kill me. Praise God. Judgment is already here. Blindness. That's blindness here. That's an insanity. Paul said, praise God in Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you? Praise God. They're letting the devil been playing. You can't even disagree. I can't disagree with you no more without you getting upset. That's the curse. Huh? That's the curse. You wonder why they don't have no debates no more? Used to have debates a long time ago, didn't they? No more debate because there's only one way now. It's their way. But I got news for you. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. But praise God, the government, he says here in this verse 22, is laid upon his shoulder. Uh, Isaiah 9, praise God, in 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be what? shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government in peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David. Praise God. He is ruler. Christ is King of King and Lord of Lord. And praise God, you just ought to bow down. You ought to bow now. Don't wait till later. Oh, later going to be too late for you. Praise God. But now notice again that in, in that verse 17, if you're back up to that 17 and that 18, it says, Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity, and he shall surely cover thee. He shall surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball in a large uh, country there, he says there. In other words, praise God, before Eliakim, uh, this first uh, uh, counterfeit uh, 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 nail in the shoe place, before uh, Eliakim can take place and, and Shebna had to be moved out of the way. Praise God. So something got to move. See, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So we found out that old Shebna had to move so Eliakim could, could take his place. Praise God. He had to be destroyed. Praise God. In the heart of those people that depended upon him as the financier, as the one that had the bag, the one that controlled them. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Those four ones and all those things y'all trust in. My bank account, my great credit, and my this. Let me tell you something. All that's going to fall. All that's going to fall. God's going to hit a 
America in his pocketbook. Huh? And I'm going to tell you, if you ain't on a solid rock, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to be a, 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 you're going to be a candidate for the asylums with so many others that'll find themselves in that same condition. But now Shebna had to be pulled up. He had to be removed. He had to be replaced, pulled up and replaced, praise God, so that the real Elijah come, the real Christ can come and be the nail in a sure place. He had to be removed. See, no man can serve two masters. Huh? You either love the one or hate the other. You can't serve both. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. You got to choose ye this day which one you going to serve. If God be God, serve him. Now, if the devil be God, then you ought to go on out there and do your thing. Go and serve him. Praise God and suffer the consequences and quit being a, a, a counterfeit Christian. Quit quit being a, 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 a pretending Christian, a wannabe Christian. And praise God, go ahead on and step on out there and be what you're going to be. Praise God. You, it's, it's, it's a painful thing to straddle that fence. Amen. But in order, in order for, for Christ to be established, praise God, in our heart and mind, there must be first an overthrow of something, somebody, a coup. Got to be a coup there in our lives. It might be, it might be you. You might be your God. You might be, you might think you all that in a bag of chips yourself. You might be your own idol God, but you got to move. Somebody has got to move. Praise God. If we look at Luke 11 there, look at Luke 11 there and you, you, you'll see that. And it says, Jesus says in Luke 11 and 20, 11 and 20, Jesus said, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God, then it's coming to you. When a strong man arm keeps his palace, his good is in peace. See, you either in Christ or you're out of Christ. You either saved or you're not saved right now. Praise God. Now, if you're not saved, I'm talking about, I ain't talking about going to church now. Wait a minute. I did that. I, I played that game a long time. I'm talking about saved. I'm a relationship with Christ. Know him as your Lord and Savior. If you are not there, then you're in the hands of this strong man, another strong man, or not the Christ, but a strong man, the devil. He, he says that Jesus said, when a strong man um, uh, keep his palace, his goods at peace. And you still saying, praise God, even though you ain't saying, I'm okay, I'm doing all right. You at peace, ain't you? Well, the devil got you clamped down, ain't he? He got you thinking that it's all right, even though you're not lining up with the word of God, even though you're saying, well, I, I think it's a woman's right to do what she want to do with her body. Huh? You don't want to call it what it is. Huh? I think it's all right to have alternative lifestyles, male with male and female with female. See, you you need to cut it, to cut that out. You know, you ought to cut that out, you know. But when a strong man arm, um, uh, keep his palace, his goods in peace. But when a stronger than he has come, there got to be a change in your life. See, that that's Shepna got to go. Whatever you've been trusting in got to go. It says here, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taken away his armor, all that false peace you've been having, all that false trust you've been having, that way and he trusted and divided his spoil. Then Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathered not with me shall be scattered. Praise God. That's what the Lord of God, the Lord says, that a strong man must be bound and the devil of self-righteousness, if you made yourself a God, you got to move, got to go, got to be cast out, got to make room for Christ, our uh, nail in a sure place. You got to make some room for him. Praise God. Christ will not uh, share his throne with another. He won't give his glory. Pray to another person, another thing, not even you. God will not put that robe of righteousness of Christ upon you until he stripped you of your own self-confidence your own self-dependency, your own goodness that you think you have. See, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all that way, they acknowledge him. If any man be in Christ, praise God, you got to be a new creature. Old thing got to pass away. If any man would be my disciples, Jesus said, he must first deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Praise God. I hear Paul saying very vividly, I die daily. Praise God. I die daily to myself so there'll be less of me and more Christ. The less of me, the more Christ can fill my heart. Praise God. In that Philippians 3, look at Philippians 3 and 4 there. It says, Christ Paul said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. I might, he said, I might. If any man think that he had a reason whereof he might trust in the flesh, I got him more of a reason. And he says, this is the reason. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Just like Jesus Christ. I followed the same pattern. 
Christ was circumcised on the eighth day. I was too. Praise God. If I want to brag on something, I can go into this thing here. He said, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrew. That's who I was. Uh, touching the law, I was blank. a Pharisee, he says, very religious. Like some of you, you're religious. Praise God. You're going to start off this first Sunday. Go in the church. You religious rascal. You, you're going to make a promise. I'm going to go for the rest of the year. Oh, you're going to do that. Paul said, but what things were gained to me, I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them all but dung. That I may win Christ, be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith, the faith of Christ, the righteousness of, which is of God by faith. So Paul said, I count all them things but dung, all the all them achievements, all those things that I thought I was, when I thought I was Mr. Big Stuff. He said, now I know all those things was about nothing. There wasn't, wasn't nothing to it. Praise God. I found Christ, he says here. I found that gem of great price. Praise God. That nail in a sure place. Praise God. Our only hope for a bright future, a bright and happy future is in Christ. A bright and happy financial future, a marriage, a relationship. If you ain't got Christ... In your relationship, brother, you're in bad shape. Hey, I thank God for a saved wife. I thank God for a saved. She just, she, you think I got it bad. She got it better than me. Praise God. We're, 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 we're two coins with the same head. Look just alike. Ain't God good? Praise God. Think alike, look alike, and love the Lord God. But only God can do that. And I know that's what a lot of you want. You want a good, happy marriage. Well, God can give you that give you financial stability, but you got to hang it all on Christ, that nail in a sure place. You got to hang it up all there. You got to get it off of uh, uh, this, that, or another, and put it where it ought to believe, ought to be belong all together. Now, as far as these resolutions are concerned, praise God, these New Year's resolutions that we're making, many of you, you're hoping for, praise God, that, uh, you know, you'll have a good job situation, be good this year, health will be good, praise God, finances will be good. Well, praise God, only only God can do that to, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. There's no other way. John 10, if you look at John 10, Jesus said, John 10, 27, Jesus said, these words, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. I know them and they follow me and I give to them eternal life and they shall never perish Neither shall any pluck them out of my out of my hand. Praise God. If you hang your life and all your future on Christ, praise God, you're talking about safe. Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Nothing. Praise God. He said, my father, which gave it to me is greater than I. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father, he said, we are one. He said, we are one. See, when we cast all our cares on him, hallelujah, the Lord, he cares for us us. We can depend on the Lord. We can trust the Lord with our lives and our future. But praise God, we got to get rid of all the other gods got to go. If even you, if you think it's you, if you think your stability and your future is in you, <laughs> You, you got to go, praise God, make room for Christ to be a part of your life. And that verse 24 there, of that Isaiah 22, he said, they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring, the issue, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cup, he said, even to the vessels of flagon, praise flagon, and everything, in other words, everything has been fastened, praise God, in the place by the father, all, where, the offsprings and issues. Everything, praise God. The born again believers, uh, we're the offsprings of, of Christ. We, we're born again of the Spirit of God. But, uh, all of us, uh, whether you're large or small, whether you're uh, smart or not so smart, whether you're knowledgeable or not so knowledgeable, but if you're in Christ, all the vessels, all the offsprings, all sizes, all colors, all races, all nationality, praise God, we hang our hopes and dreams and desires on Christ. Praise God. We even put our immortal soul, our soul, we hang that on Christ. Praise God. He is my keeper. And I do thank God for Jesus today. I thank God. Praise God. And I, I want you to uh, feel the same way. In that verse 25, look at that 25th verse there, that last verse. In that day said the Lord of hosts, shall that nail that is fast in a sure place be removed. He said that nail will be cut down and fall. 600 years before Christ was born, he's prophesied how Christ, that Christ as a nail in a sure place going to have to be pulled 
pulled up. He's going to have to be removed. He's going to have to be cut down. He's going to have to fall. And the burden that was upon him, upon him shall be cut off, he says here, for the Lord has spoken it. That burden, what burden is that was on Christ? Well, brother, it was the burden of sin. Praise God. All our sins were hung upon Christ. The burdens of sin shall be loosed from him no longer. Praise God, he paid the price on Calvary for all of our sins, all of our guilt. Praise God, therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because all of my sins have been nailed on the cross, has been placed on Christ. Praise God, all of my guilt, all of my Praise God, my debts that I owe to God. Praise God, all the sins of, of death and hell that was against me. Praise God, Christ took all of that. He took all of that. He, he, it was hung on the cross. And he removed from, from heaven my record of, of transgressions and sin. I got a clean record in heaven today. Oh, praise God, it's a clean record. Galatians, praise God. It was hung on him, all my sins. The burden was released from him, praise God, on the cross there. Galatians, praise God, uh, 1, 4 says, who gave himself for our sins, praise God, that he might deliver us, deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God the Father, praise God, he gave himself for our sin. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 says, for I, I, Paul said, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for my sins, but that burden was lifted off of him, praise God, and he went back to heaven, back to home, and dispatched the Holy Ghost down here and said, work your thing, do what you're supposed to do now, I've done my job, praise God. God, the burden is off of me right now. You take it to the people. Take it to the people and let them know that they're free. They can be set free today. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. For Paul said, for I, I did, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Hebrews 9, 28 says, for, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And to them that look for him shall he appear the second time. Second time he coming back without sin. That burden is all for him now. He coming back without sin unto salvation. Hebrews 10 and 12, praise God. It said, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God, henceforth expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. That burden of sin was taken from him. He was released from it. Praise God. First Peter 3, 18 says, for Christ also has once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Praise God. Once, just once. He ain't going to do it no more. Praise God. You can't strike that rock but one time. You can't hit him twice, y'all. First Peter 2, 24. Praise God. It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body. On the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. That burden of sin has been taken off of him. Praise God. I will nail in a sure place that burden. But he's still hanging on. We're still there though. Praise God. He, he might have released that burden of sin, but he didn't release me and you. Praise God, he holds us in his hand. Ain't you glad about that? 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5 says, For ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Praise God. In him is no sin. Christ is our nail in a sure place. Praise God. And he was removed. It, it, it Calvary there. Praise God. Uh, the burden was removed. And praise God, he fell down there at Calvary. And he, but he rose again. He rose again. Even stronger nail in a sure place. Praise God. And all who hang their lives upon him. Praise all our hopes and all of our dreams and uh, our, our, our means of salvation. We hang them on him. Praise God. And praise God, we shall never fall. We shall never fall. He fell that we might not fall. He fell. Praise God. He fell and he died on the cross that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Praise God. You can have that life today. Praise God. But I tell you what, God's people will remain strong as long as we put our trust in the Lord, not in the government. Don't let the government, don't get all caught up in this government thing. Praise God. They don't believe in the Lord. Praise God. Uh, they don't, as a whole, they don't believe in the Lord. So don't go trust in the government. Don't trust in your education system and all that. You better put your trust in the Lord. Praise God. See, if you expect 
They praise God to have eternal life. See, Christ is coming back again. He's coming back for his church. Are you a part of that church? Praise God. Well, you can be today if you will just repent of your sins. Praise God. John the Baptist came preaching repentance. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You got to first repent. But now, first of all, you got to realize you got something to repent for. You are sinner, brothers. All the sin comes short of the glory of God. I know you think you're all that. I know you do. But I've got news for you. You're a sinner. Well, I, I, I hadn't done this, Pastor, and I hadn't done that. You're still a sinner. You were a sinner when a baby. You were born in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. That's enough to send you to hell if you don't do nothing else. If you don't do nothing else, praise God. But thank God Jesus died on the cross for our sins that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You can have it today, but you've got to repent of your sins. You got to ask God to come into your heart. Let me tell you something. Lord, know your heart now. You can you can sham me, but you can't sham the Lord. He knows your heart. He knows your inside and out. So if you will be real with God, God will be real with you. God will save you. God will deliver you. The Lord will set you free today and give you that joy and that peace. But your resolutions will be no good if you're not hanging them on that nail in a sure place, hanging them on Christ, basing upon what Christ has done for you. If you want that success, praise God. If you want that relationship, if you want that peace, if you want that joy that the world can't give to you and the world can't take away, you got to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. I beg you today, praise God. I, I thank God for this great blessing he's given me, not because I deserved it, but mercy and his grace was poured out upon me and he'll do it for you today. Praise God, if you just say yes to the Lord, say yes to the Lord, repent of your sins today and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, if you like this video, go over and hit that like button over there and praise God, then go back and hit that subscribe button. And when we come again, and praise God, I, if God spare me, you know that he's going to bring me back again. He's going to give me something else. Praise God, I don't have a portfolio of information for you that I'm bringing to you. I bring it to you as God give it to me. Hot off the press, fresh bread for you. Praise God. If you love the Lord, praise God. Tune in and we'll come back next week and give you another word from the Lord. God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer.